This is Jerry Wilson and I've been asked to get something together to, ex to more explain the S-CAB or um, basically what I call DCC and beyond. This is a battery powered locomotive and I do not belong to the Dead Rails Society. I don't believe in dead rails. I believe in live rails and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But at any rate, this is the controller for the Stanton S-CAB which can be uh, gotten through him or uh, through the Northwest Shortline website. Now basically what we're talking about for you guys with and I'm gonna sit down in my chair here take my glasses off so I can see uh, this is your regular old tsunami now that's that's what you put inside your loco and your tender and stuff this is a battery now I'm, I'm going to a little bit oversized battery I used to have one that was half this size and it worked great and I thought well hmm you know bigger is better supposedly and then so you have a battery and this battery cannot be overcharged it's got a special thing it comes from s cab s dash cab this is the battery uh, charger as it were and voltage regulator which goes to the tsunami uh, this is a tsunami this is a uh, a 1000 I had a, a 75 before and it worked great and I thought well bigger is better right so we go to a, a one amp jobber and of course all these lights or these these wires here go to the the lights up front and this, the little speaker that goes into my uh, tender now all this stuff's got to go in your tender right and uh, this is the antenna for uh, the S cab here. There's the antenna there and it connects to this thing and, and you're good to go uh, My tender Let me let me come over here and take this off. I have cut off The top of the tender put in some styrene blocks in here, which I may add screws to I may not and everything's gonna be stacked in there this is just simply a styrene top that fits right in there and uh, my antenna will stick up through this little hole right here so it is going to be visible but it's uh, I don't think it's that abusive and it goes right over the air tank now the air tank uh, what's really cool about the S cab is when you fire it up uh, just by and I, uh, I guess I'll my later vehicle. Uh, I'll do a, a demo here. We just stick a nine volt battery on this thing, and it fire and it comes up. So anytime you turn on the power on your railroad track, it fires up the engine. Now, uh, the off switch, how you turn it off, if I can find it, is right here, and this is just a, a reed switch. And that it will fit inside my tank here so that all I've got to do is pass uh, if I can find it a pencil with a magnet on the end over this thing and it will turn it off over wherever it went if this thing or in this case I just wave it within an, an inch of of my air tank and it will turn it off which is really kind of cool so you can turn off any engine at any time and then uh, you also have to have the power off of that particular track the big thing that I'm talking about here is that you do not need a separate battery charger uh, you don't have to have wires going out the side of your tender to charge it you don't have to wait for the thing to run down on your battery you know it's 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 not that kind of thing at all what charges the battery is the track running around is the train running around the track with any kind of voltage on it I generally put about 9 volts on mine uh, from a DC power pack regular old power pack that you probably own anyway and you don't have to wire switches you don't have to wire anything you just stick the wires willy-nilly any any track you want and they can be they don't have to line up you don't have to have the red wires on the inside rail and the black wires on the outside rail kind of thing you can tick them anyway because this thing takes power from either direction whatever and if you run over a switch that's not wired 
uh, it just it it runs it off the battery in fact everything runs off of this battery the power in your track just charges the battery at the same time you're running which is cool now I I decided to uh, see just how this battery thing works so I hooked up my train my engine that I had on my little battery and decided well let's see how this thing will run how long it'll run before it runs out of juice and quits and it, it ran about 10 minutes around the loop just bing 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 around the loop and I decided well battery that small let's see if I can put uh, back my my nine volts or whatever I want to put on uh, my rails and see how long it'll run well after three and a half hours I gave up running the engine it, the, so the battery basically never ran out and I was pulling a fairly long passenger train up and down a few few hills so at any rate this is uh, this is what I'm going to stuff inside here and I'm actually gonna put this down and then this will go on top of it this will go uh, beside it and then this will go on top of the whole thing the batter or the speaker will end up right in the front here and come out the hole in my front of my tender now as you can see by the inches on this thing this is about the size of an HO tender it's not that big it's uh, what about an inch and a quarter wide and maybe you know three inches long inside so all this stuff's gonna fit in there and it's gonna run great uh, I think I've talked enough We'll get back uh, started on the next video. Thanks. Well, I'm back and I'm uh, going to do a quick demo on just how the power system works here. Uh, I no longer have a railroad room, so I, I work out of a roll top that I uh, unfinished furniture kind of thing so I can work in the living room and keep my wife uh, company instead of being somewhere. And since I moved to Texas, there's no basement for a large railroad so anyway I'm kind of cramped here and this is uh, this is just a power pack that I have in a drawer I, all my tools of course are like this so I've got this turned on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my my throttle here it's going to go in to the uh, the track power wires and uh, we'll just see how this works here so you can probably hear that now this is willy-nilly track power. I mean it has nothing to do with DCC or anything else but the tsunami is going to work by the power off the battery here. You can hear this and so when I turn off uh, when I want to turn this thing off I want to get it on a track where there's no power which is you know you can whatever I'm not even sure if that's true and my magnet here on the end of this pencil that I've made candy stripes so my kids don't grab it and sharpen it and use it up comes with that now see that turned it right off so anyway that's how it works that's as, as simple as it is uh, you turn on the power on your track uh, all your locomotives come uh, come alive with the number three, uh, as as any tsunami will. You dial in the engine number that you want, and you take off. And this particular thing, I think, can run up to 12 engines. I don't know why you would want to do that off of one controller, but whatever. So anyway, I'm going to do a little more work on this, get the thing installed here, and uh, get my lights working, which is going to be really painful for me because, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyway. Uh, enough talking, uh, more film later. Thank you. Well, I've been working on getting this stuff stuffed in here. Uh, at the bottom of the tender, you can see I have the battery stuffed in. And I have the speaker, the speaker here, the battery here, and the tsunami here. And it just happens to fit really good. This is the battery, uh, system manages that and, we, and you can tell that because it's the battery plugs right into the end of it here so I'm going to try to put this in here with one hand I don't know I might be able to do this flatten it out a little bit there that's not bad not bad and then over here is the antenna 
Now the antenna goes uh, up, up above and I'm going to put that in here in just a minute and this is where my on and off switch goes is right hidden right in there so I will uh, try to get both hands and get this thing in there and we'll do this again well I've gotten it uh, everything stuffed in there that's the, the battery power there and way over here that you can't see is uh, yeah, it's going to take focus here maybe maybe not um, the tsunami and the antenna board goes right on top of that now I'm going to try my best here it actually goes through this hole so I think I may have to lift it out of there and stick it up there but at any rate what I wanted to show you was there's two wires that go to the antenna that actually go to your tsunami also and these have to have a connection so you can see that there's a a male and female on each red wire and one on on each black wire the one that goes to the tsunami the one that's uh, if I can find it this one one down here has the prong sticking out and that's how you program the tsunami you actually have a radio transmitter that's plugged in to the power and you program through those two things. Now once you get it programmed, you give it your engine number and all the rest of that stuff, your chuff rate and everything, then you, you plug these back in and you're ready to go. So I'll put this back in there and we'll give it another look. Okay, I got all the wires tucked back down in there and there's still quite a bit of room here. Now, the antenna is very important. Uh, it, it needs to actually not be inside a metal tender. Uh, Zamac, you know, the white metal or, or brass because it inhibits the uh, range of where you're going to talk to it. So that's why I'm putting this up here. Now eventually I, I may uh, hang a paint this black, maybe hang a lantern on it or something. And uh, again, the, the lights go on this one. These two go to the motor. Uh, this one goes to is a track power as well as this one under here now I'm going to take the tender this is tied to the the uh, the post underneath the tender for track pickup this will go and be soldered on to the engine frame so that's that's my two two connections engine and then tender which is just exactly like it was now you can go crazy and add more contacts to your uh, tender if you want to I just don't think it's that necessary. However, um, I am going to test this now to see if it actually works. So I'm going to go over here. Looks like my transformer is working. I need you to listen to this. Okay. You can hear the speaker, which is right there. It's kind of cool, really. I, I That just happened to work out. And underneath the speaker is where all the wires come out. And they'll go into my tender. Now I can't test the motor because I don't have it hooked up, and I and I haven't programmed it for sound or chug to chug or whatever yet. So that's the way it goes. Now I'm going to take my my magic pencil here and get close to this. Okay, it didn't turn off. I forgot to turn the power off. So when you want to turn them off, you just kill the power on the track, which I did over there. I see it's all wound around down and here it goes so and that's all there is to it now you can use this same tool and other devices for you to turn uh, lights on and off uh, with with that stick on your layout and as long as there's power on the track if you have the right the battery and everything else uh, you don't need to keep alive the keep alive which takes up a lot of room because you're running on the battery and the battery will last a long time uh, before it needs to be charged. So anyway, uh, this is round one. Uh, if you notice too, my tender, my tender sides came up to about here. Let me see if I can get in here a little bit. And then I put a fence up here 
because I knew my antenna was going to stick up a little bit. And I could, I was thinking about just making my coal pile a little bit bigger and then slamping down in the front. And I still may do that. I may uh, take one or two rungs off of this, uh, of the fence going around there. I was looking for my, my scrap pieces of fence. I found it on a locomotive and uh, I just unsoldered it, cast, uh, molded it, and then cast it. And so there's three pieces running around there. So that's what that is. And this thing will look really cool. I'm getting now excited. I'm getting excited. Getting this thing in front of that. And of course there's my chassis, a little 460. So uh, this will do it for a few days until I get caught up with what I need to do with it. But the thing works, makes sound. I'm really thrilled.